Um, welcome everyone. Um, good to see you all. Thanks for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Um, so we are here to talk about our, the return to the table campaign. Um, so we'll just run through the, you know, the purpose of it and, and why um, it was put in place um, alongside kind of how, yeah, the, the, the tools and stuff and resources that are available um, for clubs and organisations um, to help get people back to the table. Um, and then also kind of we'll touch on, um, I guess, the the opportunities for, for clubs, leagues and, and other organisations to, to get involved in the campaign. Um, so the Return to the Table um, campaign is, is all really about kind of trying to give confidence to motivate and kind of invoke passion for people to return to the, to the game, to play in volunteering, coaching or officiating. Um, we, we obviously know that there's been you know clubs and leagues across the country and in very different positions um both in terms of being able to access venues um and and therefore every club and every area is in, is in a different position um in terms of people coming back to to the table some will have only just come back in the last few weeks others still won't have been able to come back and others may have been back playing for for a number of, of months and have been playing in every possible moment during well, not during the lockdowns, but in between the lockdowns. Um, so um, we felt as though we wanted to, to put something in place to, to help give confidence to those that hadn't made a decision to come back, to help motivate those that have perhaps not played for 18 months and, and therefore not perhaps forgotten how much they enjoyed the sport, um, whether that's through the friends they've made in the sport or or the competitive experience that they that they miss and just just help remind people of, of some of those things um, really so um, we hope the campaign will help to do a number of, of those things um, what I'd like people to do just just out of interest really um, is in the chat box if you could if you could just write down a be a percentage of people where your your own club or league it doesn't doesn't mean you have to to run the, that club or league um, that have returned to to the game or, or to play in volunteering or coaching. I guess, yeah, compared to where you would normally, who you would normally expect to be playing at this time, because you recognise that some don't come back now and will return at the beginning of the season. So um, I guess, the, yeah, a, an idea of a percentage from you guys as to who, yeah, how many people are coming back or have said they are going to come back. Um, it'd just be interesting to, to see that. If you can type that in the chat box, obviously, if you, if you don't feel able to share, that's fine too. Um, but it'd be interesting to see um, those, those that are happy to. Um, so the campaign, Return to the Table campaign, will run for two months. Um, so we wanted to, to give it a longevity um, to help build the message in and, and not just be a, a kind of a one day or a two to two day activity um, that, that then kind of filtered out, it kind of fizzled out quite quickly. So we wanted to, to create that longevity and to enable us to talk to different groups of people, whether that's volunteers or coaches or players, um, and and build different messaging within within that eight week period, which we struggle to do in a kind of a one day or a two day moment. Um, so the campaign will have different themes over those two week periods, which we'll touch on in a second, um, and then it'll also be a, a kind of celebratory fortnight in which we want clubs and leagues and organisations to to run events and um, to help entice people back. I'm just going to jump to the chat box and just to see um, some of the comments coming in here. So Anne said about 50%, um, Dave, Dave too, kind of 50% of club members back playing. Um, yeah, 25% only turn up once a week during the league season. Um, Kevin's not, not quite sure yet, but perhaps around 25%. David, 50%. Stephen has said there's 100%. Um, De Deborah hasn't been to a club since since the 1980s. Um, so it's a, perhaps this campaign will help you help you get back to, to playing again. Um, and and Steve, kind of 25, percent but only running practice sessions um, at the moment and not kind of any competitive activity. Um, so it seems like kind of around 50 percent on average probably that are, are back playing at the moment as well. And Anne's comment around kind of missing players uh, offset by quite a lot of new players and members, I think, is a 
I'm speaking to Martin just before actually is is something we have seen quite consistently. Those clubs and leagues that have, that are set up and, and do well to to reach out to, to new players um, have done have seen there have often said, "Oh, good, we're going to struggle to get our old the, the, our previous existing players back in when they decide to come back because of all the new players that are, that are starting." Um, and Jenny said about 40%, but kind of running coaching sessions. Um, so thank you for that. It's interesting to see. And do do keep yeah, writing any questions or or kind of comments in the in the chat box in terms of your own club's experience or or questions that you'd like to, to ask. Um, so there are some key campaign messages really, um, and and they've all come from your feedback to us um, around how we can look to address the concerns that have been raised by either clubs or, or members or kind of volunteers and coaches and um, and also take advantage of the opportunities that might have presented themselves um, through through this last 18 months which we'll touch on a few of those um, in a little while um, but it also kind of takes into account the the concerns and opportunities that have been raised through club matters surveys, which is Sport England Club, Club Matters, the Sport and Recreation Alliance surveys, and the Sport England Active Life surveys, which, which highlights some of the lack of confidence still with, with a large proportion of the population in coming back to indoor spaces to play physical activity. There's a lot more confidence to come back to, to outdoor um, sport and physical activity, but it's still, I think it's 54% of um, the general population has still expressed that they are concerned and have yeah, concerns about returning to, to play sport and physical activity indoors. Um, so which is, yeah, it's obviously half the population is still, is still difficult to do that. So that probably perhaps marries up with that 50% that have come back so far, because there's still a large proportion that don't have the confidence yet to do so. Um, so the, the key kind of three key campaign messages that we will include within that, uh, within the kind of messaging throughout is around confidence and how we can use the, the video content and interviews with clubs that we have generated, um, as well as kind of toolkits to, to build confidence and, and the messaging that we can get out to, to those people that haven't yet come back to the game, uh, both through our own kind of channels and through obviously clubs and leagues channels. Um, so one of an example of that is we've, we've developed a, a template email that can be that clubs and leagues can use to, to send out to their members to show them the work that they're doing to make it a safe place to come back to and and to help motivate to get them back so that that will be it's not quite yet ready but it will be over the next day or two and it'll be in the toolkit and, and we'll obviously share that um, share that with clubs as well um, the second one is around kind of returning with motivation um, and just yeah helping to motivate people to to come back and then the third one is around kind of passion and and whether that's be through the Olympics or the Paralympics, and um, you know, we just had Commonwealth Games one year to go events yesterday, um, and trying to invoke that passion for for people of their love for the sport. Um, so this is just a, a slide of pretty logos, really, but um, it's there's, there's lots of different logos that you will see within the. Um, assets for those of you who've downloaded the digital toolkit um, and yeah there are lots of different kind of yeah, return with friends return safely and depending on I guess the feedback you yourselves have received as clubs or leagues you'll be able to to use the appropriate kind of messaging to help appeal to, to that group so it might be a a 50 plus group or a youth rate group are very focused on the social activity and then and then you may try, choose to focus on kind of returning with friends and, and playing the social element of the sport. Um, whereas, yeah, a, a different group of, of individuals might be more reluctant to play because of the safety measures that, that they're not sure will be in place. Um, so if there's any, any logos that you think of oh, it would be useful to have a return to or return with um, within that, do let us know and um, we can quite easily create, create those for you and, and help to bring that message in home. Um, so we talked about some of the concerns when returning to the table um, and and helping to alleviate some of those. And, and I think if there's anything, you know, this isn't a full comprehensive list, clearly, but I think if there's any other concerns that you've heard from your own members or, or your, your own experience, 
Um, yeah, please do type them in the chat box if you're interested to see any other concerns that, that people have or have heard a lot of um, from your players or volunteers. Um, one of which is kind of lower fitness levels and, and perhaps, yeah, they haven't been able to exercise over the past 18 months and, and therefore are not confident to come back until they've built up their fitness levels. So I guess, you know, the campaign is twofold from that perspective. Um, one is to help build that confidence and, and explain to them that, it, that there's lots of people in the same position, so you can start slow. I think the other thing from a club perspective and activity perspective, how can you establish sessions um, and set up a, a work, an environment in which that helps them to, to come back without having to worry about their fitness, whether it's a, a 20 minute pay and play slot where they can set up or so they don't feel the need to come for the whole hour session or whatever that might be just to help those that have concerns about their fitness levels. Um, as concerns um, from the surveys we've done around kind of their friends or that usually play at the club, not return to the sport. So their, their familiar practice partner that they might have booked on with um, is not is not coming back or is perhaps yeah not not confident to do so, but they'd actually be quite happy to come back, but they're not because of um, because they don't know anyone to 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 arrange a knock up with. And especially in the days of at the moment where we're having to book tables and you're often having to book a table with someone that you know, um, that can be quite a a challenging situation for those that perhaps don't know a lot of people in the club or their their usual league team members are not have not come back yet so again thinking about how we can um, set up sessions that can help those people to come back um, um, fewer engaged members this is obviously a concern from from clubs um, reduced facilities and workforce available is is still obviously a, a big challenge and the club support officers of what martin um, is one of those and is on this call um, is is happy to help with with that, and the club support officers are there to to try and support you in in finding alternative facility solutions and and talking you through any options that might you might want to explore. Um, there's still a lot of nervousness around the risk of COVID nineteen and COVID related restrictions, and the change in kind of consumer behaviour and routines really is there's a concern from clubs that people have found different physical activity to do that either kind of whether it's online doing a Joe Wick session in their in their lounge or they've took up a different outdoor sport um, whilst they've yeah whilst the kind of restrictions have been in place and they haven't been able to get in indoors and how do we entice them back to, to the game. Um, so the there are whilst there are concerns there are also lots of opportunities that exist as well so you know one of those and it's good to hear Joe that you've had lots of oh sorry um um, and you've had lots of new people come in through your doors as well. Is that the number of people that bought tables for the home over the past 12 months has skyrocketed? The table you couldn't find a table for love nor money in the first lockdown. Like every every um Tempton's company was selling out of indoor tables for the home. So um there are lots of people out there that are picking up a bat um and and playing that, that weren't before. Um so we have seen a lot of clubs be really successful in in generating new participants. The a club that my son goes to, they originally had four young people um, and then, but they've now grown to 12 over the past kind of two or three months. So, you know, there are people, whilst there are people who are nervous, there's lots of people that are also keen to get back, um, get find something new as well and become physically active again. Um, there's a post from Steve that they've had 15 new members since returning. So I think there is a real opportunity there. Um, and, you know, that's what we hope the campaign can be used for as too. Um, and, and that kind of goes to the point, really, is just 58% of people say they would like to do more physical activity once COVID-related restrictions have been lifted. Um, so there is an appetite. There was a, you know, an increased awareness from the government and the media around being physically active when the lockdown, particularly when the first lockdown was, was imposed um, around how important it was to be physically active. So it's brought it to more people's attention and therefore they are looking for opportunities to, to be active in different ways. Um, we delivered a lot of kits to the home, um, kind of yeah, over a couple of thousand kits to the home through both Ping and TT Kids. So again, it, it bringing in new people to the sport to have their first experience of the game. Um, and the vaccine rollout is having a more positive impact on attitudes now towards taking part. Um, obviously, particularly in those kind of 50 plus that have had their two, two vaccines, 
Um, and I, I think particularly after the 16th of August, obviously when the, um, the yeah, self isolation is removed for those that have had two vaccines, I think that again, that will help remove some of that nervousness of getting out and about. Um, and we touched on kind of that positive message and around the importance of staying active. Um, so as we mentioned, we, we have got some kind of bi-weekly themes. So within each two week period, we will focus on a slightly different area. So the first two weeks will be more focused on adults, um, which we'll see where we are now. The campaign launched on Monday. Um, the middle two weeks will focus more on um, juniors, junior activity. Um, the, the third week is um, more kind of towards older people and particularly kind of looking at those U3A groups, um, for example, that for those of you aware of U3A University of Third Age or those 50 plus clubs that, um, that a lot of clubs operate during the kind of daytime and, and a lot of those stopped because of either lack of facility or the fact that doubles couldn't be played throughout the, the, a lot of the past 18 months and, and a lot of that activity is taken up by doubles. But now that's back, how can we help help those, those clubs to, to be aware of the fact that they can now play doubles if they're, if they're not as, perhaps aren't checking the, the guidance every day um, and yeah, support them to play again. And as we touched on, there will be a celebration fortnight and this is the, one of the key parts of the campaign really. We hope, we're asking clubs, leagues, organizations, schools to run a celebration, celebratory event in that two week period, the beginning of the season, whether that's a come and try day, um, whether it's a kind of a family fun day for, for club members to bring family members, kids, grandparents and, and so on, or whether it might be a, a competition, a, a small fun competition to get those back into the swing of things. That, that's gonna be different for every club and there's no reason you can't do more than one thing, obviously we've had, um, kind of six or seven clubs, so, so five or six clubs, I think, sign up already and they're, they're running two or three different types of events. Um, so and we hope lots of, lots of clubs and organisations will run events in that, that time. We're hoping for over 100 and, um, yeah, hopefully lots more too. The T, there will be a TT Kids focus in, in the following week to that and then a diversity and inclusion focus um, in, the, in the final week. It's actually until 27th September, so it's a typo there. Um, in which we will launch our new diversity and inclusion strategy in that week too. Um, so as we touched on, the, the celebration and engagement um, week in that kind of fortnight period at the beginning of September is a real opportunity to celebrate and, and engage with our members, both existing and, and potential new, um, and run kind of these return to the table sessions for people of all age groups. There is a toolkit available, which isn't just for that fortnight, but it has a, um, a guidance document for running your open day and ideas as, as to what you might do. Um, and it's great that 56 kind of organizations have already signed up to that toolkit um, and hopefully received all, all that information that they can download all the logos or the posters and flyers that you can access to, to use for, for your own kind of part of the campaign. Um, and, you know, as well as, yeah, looking at new players, there was a re-engagement of existing as we've touched on, and then the engagement of new participants. And um, there was a real opportunity there to, to try and use those, those days to help do that. We are looking at how we can support you more and more with kind of social media assets for those of you who had club social media accounts and Facebook accounts and, and to try and reach out to those new audiences. Um, and of course, do let us know your plans. There's a, there's a sign up link on our, website which we will share after the call as well um, and where we're asking you to sign up let us know a little bit about your event and, and what you're planning to do um, and yeah help you to to promote that event there is going to be a, a google maps um, page which where people will be able to to find their own event and we'll obviously be sharing that across our kind of channels as well so people can find your your event your local events um, within that kind of google maps document too um, so there are, of course, some other key dates in this period, you know, not least the Olympics, which are, which are happening at the moment. So obviously we kind of have our players are now out, unfortunately, but we've got the Paralympics to look forward to um, between the 24th of August and 5th of September. Um, and, and obviously part of that crosses over with the, the celebratory fortnight um, in the beginning of September. 
Um, and on the right, you'll see Will Bailey, obviously gold medalist from four years ago. Um, and I'm, yeah, I think we've got 12 or 13 Paralympic athletes competing. So there'll hopefully be a lot of publicity raised around that time um, to enable us to, to kind of use the Paralympics to help build the disability participation across the sport too. Um, so there's TT Kids bookings for, the, for those of you who are on the call that are part of TT, the TT Kids program um, that are now live for those programs starting in October. And obviously membership renewal, we're in membership renewal season, whilst it seems a bit crazy um, that it's come around already. Um, 2nd of August is when the phone lines open for renewal, online renewals already, are already open. So um, for those looking to get their, their players back to kind of league activity in particular, um, it's obviously um, an opportunity to enable them to become members again. And at some point in August, um, I think we're waiting for the exact date, but the Commonwealth Games ticket window um, opens for those that more spectators of, of the sport. Um, so, so that's kind of the main information we just wanted to run through with you all really and, and let you know about the campaign and, and how you can get involved. I'm just gonna ask Martin, if, um, who's one of our club support officers, if Martin's got anything to, he'd like to add. Well, there was just a, a question um, in there that um, Anne uh, Borrowdale, I think, mentioned with regards to could uh, some of the Sport England return to play funding be used um, to support some of this work, be it that um, you know this is a sort of new scheme. Um, I think the answer to that is yes. Um, you know, if you've, you've been involved with um, uh, adults and juniors within your club already, um, you're just using additional tools to, to support the, um, the rollout. I think Sport England would be delighted that you're using marketing and other ideas and thoughts to to uh, to engage with those groups and get people back yeah absolutely I'm sure that, i'm sure that'll be I'm sure that'll be fine is there is, is there anything you wanted to add martin at all um from what we've talked about so far i think that, say from a viewpoint of the of the sport england funding itself it's um if you are looking for uh funding to support then you know we're currently up to um, I think it's uh, 85 clubs have applied and uh, the sport overall has received um, just under half a million pounds now, so £468,000. So it is worth applying for some funding to support some of this, uh, this area work if you, if you wish to do so. The, the key thing for us, I think, is yeah, how, look at how you can use the campaign to, to reach out to your members um, and, and look at yeah, an event in that celebratory fortnight. Um, we, we hopefully will have them in all four corners of the country and obviously the middle of the country too. Um, and, and yeah, we'll try and help, help you promote those as, as much as possible um, to both yeah, re-engage existing and, and look at how we can get more, more people into the sport. I think just to add to that, that Greg, I've just shared the, um, uh, the link uh, to the website page where you can register for the toolkit and also just tell us about the events that you're uh, planning to run. Um, and also, if, uh, if you're, you do have a social media account, we've got the hashtag uh, return to the table, um, which is going to be it's on most of the information that you've seen there and on the slides, but um, feel free to use it. Cool. But yeah, if, if you haven't downloaded the toolkit yet or haven't signed up to the toolkit, just yeah, follow that link on that Martin's posted there. There's lots of useful, yeah, kind of either pictures, images, posters um, that you can you can utilize there. And as I said, we'll we will be adding that kind of template email and messaging that you'll be able to use as well. Cool. Thank you everyone. Good to see you all. Thank you for joining us and good luck with your return to play.